Today is going to be a quick demonstration on how to fit off a Cat 6A cable. Now, a couple of quick things before we get started is the difference between Cat 6 and Cat 6A. Uh, this cable in particular here is a shielded Cat 6A. The foil, I've already cut off these cores here. Right, so the first thing with Cat 6A is it's a wee bit different. You do have a grounding wire here to terminate. Also, we'll move that right out of the way. What we have here is the difference between a Cat 6 and a Cat 6A Ethernet end. So on the left here is your Cat 6, and the right here is your Cat 6A. Uh, they're pretty similar to crimp. Cat 6A's got this grounding part to it. Now these wee inserts that go around the cables, you'll see that the Cat 6A one hopefully you can see good on this side has got much larger insulation than the existing Cat 6 ones. So what that means is you can't go around and use your Cat 6 crimping tool even if you modify it and take the back plate off because it does crimp both the front and holds it in place at the back while it does that you can't go and modify it and use it, I tested it because this front part on it does not go deep enough and it does not penetrate through the Cat 6 part properly. So what you will need to go and do is invest in a proper Cat 6A crimping tool. This one is the Tally Titan uh, 2. And firstly, of course you've got your Ethernet crimp end here. Now the other part here is your grounding crimp. And this part here crimps this middle part around the grounding wire. These here should be around 100 bucks. Before you do Cat 6A, make sure you get one. If you're thinking, oh, I can get one of these toolless connection ends for Cat 6A, don't even bother with these. They are a terrible design, and I've had a couple because when I started doing Cat 6A, the company supplied these at the start. We'd test them, they'd be fine, come back, and you'd find that when they were bent on a particular angle, it lost continuity between the contacts here and these connection pins. Throw these in the garbage, don't use them, get the proper ones, and get the proper crimping tool for it. Uh, the other part you'll need is a wee boot, just to take the strain off the cable and it makes it look nicer at the end of the job. Cool, now that that rubbish is out of the way, let's get on to it. So this end here, uncrimped. Now what I generally do in the field is I would just go around it with my side cutters. Um, I have been doing it for many years that way and it's easy to do as long as you're very careful not to put pressure on the cores inside and you're simply just getting the insulation. Otherwise, if you're new to it, get one of these proper strippers and they're really simple to use. With the Cat 6A we just go in the largest hole on the end here. Literally chuck it on, spin it around once and there we go. Now this shielding part we tend to just get rid of it. Get rid of the foil off the cable cores and you'll find there's also a grounding wire right there. Keep that grounding wire, don't get rid of that one. Undo the foils, just like that. And you'll see the cores are twisted together just like your ordinary Cat 6 cables. Now the next part is to untwist these. You can do it by hand or you can get a bit of the insulating material. Throw it onto one of the cores and just twist it around. And then you've got your cores separated. Now the next part, obviously get rid of this foil and crap. Keep that grounding wire. I ideally would have done that for untwisting them but it makes really no, not much difference at all. Sweet, so now that that part's done and we've got our grounding wire still attached, what we need to do is flatten these cable ends out. So you can either get your thumb and forefinger and just press on the cable to flatten it out like that or you can use the back end of a tool. Just be careful that you don't snag on the copper and fracture it or break it in any way if you're using the end of a tool. 
make sure that you pair them up with the corresponding colour. Unfortunately with this cable, this particular batch, there is no colour coordination on these white cores, so they're all plain white. Generally they would be a striped colour or a lighter shade of that colour. I'm sure that will be fixed in the future. That only changes one small thing, is that when you're threading them on through this, you do it one at a time, as opposed to lining them up and sliding it on. Just so you don't get the cores in the wrong order, you have to cut the end off and start again. Now the next part is deciding whether you want to use 568A or type B connections on the ends. They are slightly different and whichever one you choose or have a personal preference on, you stick to it and don't change within the same property or house you're working on. Generally I stick to B but I have done Ethernet cables in type A myself. They, there is no difference on them, they both work exactly the same. I hear arguments for and against them all the time. It just comes down to personal preference. In saying that, this one here I will do to type B and we'll just go from there. So for type B, we're going to keep the two orange cores together and split the greens. Type A, you would do the opposite. You keep the greens together and split the oranges. Make sure you save a Google image of whichever type you're going to do your house to. If you're new to this, uh, if you've done it for a while, then you probably already know it off by heart. Right, so the next thing, and it is essential, and it's the same with Cat6, is you want to get the orientation right with the insert part here. On this cable here, the insert flat side, the side that's straight, is always going to be on the back side of this connector. So the angled bit, you'll see that one end, I hope you can see, has got a slight angle there. The angled bit is always going to be at the front here, and there's a wee bit of a gradient where it comes to the pins. Once you have that at the right orientation, you can then work from left to right, knowing that pin one's always going to be on the left. And we start on the left hand side of this by threading the cables into the bottom of it and out the top. Now before you put this end on the cable, a good trick is to get the orientation right. So we're going to be starting with the orange end. So what we want to do is make sure the orange two cores are this side. The blue are at the back of the cable here, the brown are on this side and the green are at the front. So if we lie it flat, we can have the blue in the middle, the brown on that side, split the greens as to where they're gonna run inside this. Uh, this one here, not that one. Get rid of that. Yeah, so if you have them flat like this, they're gonna slide on much easier. So for type B, we go orange white and then orange. Then we go green white, blue, blue white, then green, brown white, and brown on the end. And you'll find that when you slide this on, it's really easy to do so. You've really got no twists at this end, so you can slide it almost to the end. Now with these Cat 6A ones, you don't want to push it right to the end. You actually want to leave it off a wee bit. Uh, just because when these cable ends are pushed in, this plastic part actually sits in this area here, and the cable cores get pushed into the end there. So you can line it up here, and as you can see where I have it right now is pretty perfect for what I want. So I'll trim these cable ends off right at the end of this plastic bit. And there we go. You want to get them as straight as possible. What you don't want is to cut them when the cables are on an angle, because when you straighten it out, you're going to have some ends that are too short there. Now the next part is to slide this part into the connection end here and that literally slides on just like that. Give it a wee bit of a push in there. And what you want to see in the end here is that these cable cores are touching the window at the end. Once that is done, you want to keep the cable straight as possible. So don't bend it and then you slide it into your Cat 6A crimper it clicks 
and you see the end here is lined up and then simply push the handle in and release it and then push from this side and pull it out then have a quick look at the end and just make sure that you can see that all of these contacts have pressed in through the cable insulation through the end here that to me looks like a perfect fitting one thing I didn't mention first was to make sure that you put the boot on the cable before you crimp this end up otherwise you will have to start again unless you're doing a patch lead which you can just slide it on the other end but always get into the habit of doing it otherwise you'll screw it up someday anyway this grounding wire here what you want to do is coil it up underneath this shielded crimp end so to do that grab your long nose pliers out and wrap it up around them just like that press it under this end now you can hold on to the metal here and just bend it in a wee bit so it's covering the coil. That there is ready to be crimped on. So once you've got this folded down a wee bit, pinch it in a wee bit, you'll see the ends are staggered slightly. That's the way they're meant to be. you notice in the crimpers here, you do have to get the orientation correct of this part. So you can slide it in and it will click into place where it's meant to go. And then pretty much once she's in, you can then push down on the crimp part. And there we go, that's crimped pretty nicely. Obviously don't crimp too hard or you might impede the cores on the inside. Then all you gotta do is slide the boot over it. There we go. And that there is your finished Cat 6A Ethernet end. So what I'll do is I'll do the other end of the cable and then I'll give it a quick test with my tester. The network tester I have will show up any faults on the cable uh, under wire map. Wasn't designed for Cat 6A. But when I do get a specific Cat 6A tester, which I am on the market for at the moment, I will show you guys testing Cat 6A cabling and I'll see if I get a certification kit for them. Also, in the upcoming video, I will show you the difference between having a Cat 6 setup and a Cat 6A setup over distance and we'll compare the internet speeds you can get off that. We'll try and maximize it and try and get as close to one gigabyte per second download and one gigabyte per second upload as possible. I do have a very, very low latency. I do live near a server. It's about two milliseconds, so I should be able to get the fastest internet that we can actually obtain these days in New Zealand. So once you've got both ends done, plug one end into one end of your tester and then the other end into the main port and then do your wire map and there we go pass so that this here tells you that all of your cores are corresponding at both ends so each one meets up to exactly what number it is meant to and that there are no breaks in the cable here if there was a broken end, there would be a cross here. Or if there was cores that were in the wrong order, then the numbers would be around the wrong way. Now on this one here, it can't pick up what end of the cable it is, but with a better tester, you'll be able to distinguish that. This one here is designed for Cat 6, not Cat 6A as I say, and I will be getting one at some point in the future. So one last thing that you'll want to do, unless you've got the correct tester, I'm sure the correct one will test the shielding on it. Right, so what you probably want to do is a quick resistance test on the two shielded ends. Only if it's practical, of course, because if these were in the wall, you wouldn't be able to do it unless you had a fly lead. And as you can see, 0.0, .0 ohms. So the shielding is crimped and terminated correctly. But anyway guys, hopefully this uh, video was helpful. Cheers for watching. Make sure you subscribe. Most of my viewers don't subscribe. So it'd be good if you smash that sub button and smash a like as well.